In a microservices based architecture, there will always arise a need to design workflows. For example, when on an e-commerce website someone places an order, we need to send an email confirmation to the user, notify the seller to keep the shipment ready and also assign a logistic delivery partner so that the package is delivered to the user. Modeling these workflows is challenging as it requires multiple microservices to coordinate. So how can we implement them? There are two high level architecture patterns to implement workflows in a microservices based architecture and they are orchestration and choreography. In this video, we take a detailed look into the two patterns, see what they are, how they are implemented and which one to use when. But before we move forward, I want to talk to you about a code based coastal system design that I have been running since March 2021. Right? If you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, this course is for you. Because this is a cohort based course, it will not just be me rambling a semi optimized solution thinking it's the most amazing solution out there. Instead, it will be a collaborative environment where every single person who is part of the cohort will can pitch in his or her ideas and we will evolve our system around that. Right? Every single problem statement comes with a brainstorming session where we all together brainstorm and evolve our system. That's where everyone understands the kind of trade offs we made while making that decision instead of just saying hey we'll use a particular queue we'll have the justification why we use only that queue why we use that particular database why sql why not no sql right how are we leveraging throughput how are we ensuring that our system scales that's the highlight of this course this course is taken by more than 500 engineers to date spanning nine countries and seven cohorts right people from all top companies have taken this course and the outline is very intriguing it's very exciting so we start with week one around, we start with the core foundation of the course where we design online offline indicator, then we try to design our own medium, then we go into database where we go in depth of database locking and take and see few very amazing examples of data log, uh, database locking in, uh, in action and how do we ensure that our system scales through that. Then the third week is all about going distributed where we design our load balancer. I'll walk you through the actual code of a, of, a, of a toy load balancer and understand how TCP connections are managed and how simple it is to build load balancer. Then week four is about all about social networks. Week five is all about building your own storage engines. Like we'll build that intuition on if you were to ever design your storage engine, how would you do that? Right. Then week six is about building high throughput systems. Seven is about building uh, IR systems, basically information retrieval systems and ad hoc designs where we design our own message brokers like SQS where we design distributed task scheduler and we conclude the course with week 8 where we talk about the super clever algorithms that has powered or that has made those systems possible. Right? I have also attached a video verbatim as is from my first quote where we designed and scaled Instagram notifications. I will highly encourage you to check this video out. Right? And now back to the video. In our discussion, how are we going to implement workflows in a pure microservices based architecture? So say we are building, so say we are building an e-commerce website and whenever a user purchases something, we have to send an email confirmation to the user, notify the seller to keep the shipment ready and assign a logistic delivery partner to ship it. So theoretically or basically visually, it can be visualized into a very simple looking flowchart. Whenever an order is placed, order service accepts the order and somehow the user needs to be notified, seller needs to be notified, delivery partner needs to be assigned, right? So here there are three services which are involved after the order is placed. So how will these services get to know what they need to do? So there are two ways to model uh, such workflows on microservices based architecture. The first one is orchestration. Second one is choreography. Let's, look, let's look, uh, take a look at orchestration now. So the core idea of orchestration is that the decision logic should be centralized. Right? So let there be a single brain who tells others exactly what to do. So a simple example would be whenever the order service takes the order, it becomes the brain, it becomes the coordinator. And what it would do is it would invoke the API of the notification service to send an email notification to the user. It would invoke the API of the seller in order to ask it to keep the shipment ready, it would then contact the logistic service to basically assign a logistic delivery partner. Right. So here the order service is acting as that brain who would do that coordination and, and ensure that the entire workflow is complete. Right. So here all the three and obviously this, this need not be a distributed transaction, not, not going into that complexity, understand the basically absorb the overall idea of orchestration as a, as a pattern. Right. So here the 
thing is pretty simple there is only one brain which is order service right now the other three services are dumb so order service will tell them exactly what to do and they will just do that right so order service would know when to trigger what and it would do the and it would do the overall trigger part and all right other services are not independent so notification service uh, seller service logistics logistics service they are not independent so they cannot independently decide ki hey now i want to send a notification to this or now i want to assign a logistic delivery partner someone will tell them who will tell them the coordinator the order service will tell them right this is a simplistic example for me for you folks to understand what orchestration is all about right so this uh, the analogy of this orchestration is basically from a gigantic orchestra where you see the coordinator or the conductor of the orchestrator to tell ki hey now you play the guitar now you play the drums and all of that stuff right so that's the core idea behind the orchestration pattern and the workflow we designed was just a one level workflow ki order service and then the three involved service but in real world in a uh, in a very complex business the workflow can also become very complex and you might need to have ki when these two are done then trigger the third workflow once five are done then only do this right so the workflows can get as complex and you need a coordinator to do that and that is the orchestrator part of it right okay second one choreography the idea of choreography is basically is basically converse of orchestration so orchestration says that uh, this is logic should be centralized what could be the other thing decision logic is distributed right so the idea here is let every single service have its own brain right and the core concept of choreography is to make it event driven so this laid the foundation for event driven architectures so you might have heard this term quite a bit in recent times but this is the core idea behind event driven architecture so let each service be independent and they need to think what they have to do when something happened right so the job of the order service is pretty simple now so whenever order service accepts the order so basically when the order is placed the order service publishes a message somewhere into a pub sub message broker wherever it want to go but it publishes an event right this event is subscribed by all the involved services when the event is published the notification service seller service and logistic service which have subscribed to the event let's say event is orders placed they would take the action depending on the event they are not told what to do but the notification service seller service and logistics uh, logistic logistic service whenever they get an event they would take the the decision ki hey now the order is placed what do i need to do log notification service will say ki are i need to send a notification to the user so that would be the business logic that would be handled there right so each of the involved services is having its own separate brain right and order service once the order is accepted just publish the message and done right so this is the core idea behind event driven architecture right this basically core the the architecting complex workflows on a pure asynchronous basis is basically choreography and the foundation for event driven architecture right so now whenever the order is placed and uh, the order service simply publishes an event simply emits an event into a pub sub kafka whatever you want to use that's that's not a concern of us right and the notification service seller service and logistics 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 service sorry gets that a uh, particular event and then they decide what to do with it right so here if we see all the four services they are not totally decoupled every service is running on its own whenever they receive the event they take the action right and the best part is this makes a system very extensible now for example if tomorrow we have to add the fourth service that whenever the order is placed i want to i want to show it into the order space of the user that would be a poor example but hypothetically let's say we want to do that right so then it would just be adding one more service which is subscribed to the same order placed event and done like your system is very extensible because the services are pretty decoupled right so that's the idea of choreography right and the ways to implement this is using message broker uh, message streams like kafka and what not like right? you can use any of this to implement this wrap up sub work but the core idea is publishing an event subscribing from an event and every service independently taking its own decision now which one to use when where and why and how and all of that right how how are we going to decide so if you see in today's day and age 
most modern systems they are inclined towards choreography because it gives you loose coupling we just saw how uh, <coughs> decoupled all the four services were order service when it accepted the order it just need to publish an event and done right it does not have to do that coordination between other services so it made systems very loosely coupled it made the system extensible as well because we saw adding a fourth service as a consumption of the same order space event was so simple right it made our services very flexible because now services are independent to take its own change like for example if notification service earlier only used to send email notification now also wants to send a mobile notification or an sms notification can very easily do that because it does not require any sort of complex the the service is service in itself is deciding what to do right and robust so here the workings of one service so if one of the services down let's say notification service is down it does not affect the other part of it like the other services which are subscribing to the same event they are not affected at all right so this makes our overall architecture pretty robust so which is why most modern architecture prefers they prefer choreography in most cases right and <clears throat> but with choreography what we need to be very aware of is the observability becomes very complex because the entire communication is asynchronous and decoupled what would happen is how would you know if a message was sent or or if an event was published first of all if the event is published then the event is then uh basically all the three involved services got that event if they got that event how are you sure that they have actually sent the message so observability across all of this decoupled system is a big pain so you need to be wary of the fact that you might have to build a very complex observability uh, module in order to visualize on what's done and what actually there are tools to do that uh, you can take a look something called as distributed tracing and you would get the idea but observability becomes a challenge so you need to know that everything is eventual you need to know that uh, you need to know the path that that event took and what action who did and where and why so observability bit bit of a challenge but not as big but still you need to be wary of the fact that observability might be a little tricky but one thing to note is like i i always say this life is non binary why do you think if one is good the other has to be bad people think that hey everything is event driven so no we should not be using orchestration no i agree that choreography is good but this does not mean that orchestration is bad and because orchestration is synchronous it's a request response based thing we can use it at a lot of places where we need synchronous communication between services for example services that needs to be invoked transactionally basically distributed transaction across services in few 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 weeks back i i created a couple of videos on uh distributed transaction using two phase commit and exact and actually implemented a two phase commit distributed transaction to mimic a 10 minute grocery delivery thing right so do 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 take a look at on my channel uh in order to understand what distributed transactions are and how they are actually implemented it's not just theoretical but we have practically implemented that so i would highly encourage you to check it out but here when we talk about this that the sort of communication that we are looking at is whenever we use orchestration we can as we can have distributed transaction that ensures that all the three are done then only one would happen right so if you would want to model distributed transactions ki either all or none that can very easily be modeled using orchestration because the communication needs to be synchronous right so that is one great place where orchestration comes in extremely handy second for example you want to send an uh, you want to send a otp for logging in now this cannot be done asynchronously that i just emit an event and my notification service will send an otp to the user that is a very wrong way to design this because if you do it asynchronously it would add a delay for your user to get an otp let's say due to any reason your consumers are down then your, your user is not even receiving an otp right plus here the, your mobile carrier it will take some time for your mobile carrier to deliver the sms to the user so to ensure that the sms very quickly reaches the user you need to ensure that the communication happens synchronously so that's where your authentication service will synchronously talk to your uh, will will synchronously be sending otp 
by invoking the API of your notification service to directly send OTP to your user. So that the logging in time is bare minimum. Right? Plus, you know, if it failed, you can retry and all. Like right? all of that could be very, is very easily modeled when the flow is synchronous. So orchestration comes in very handy with that. Right? Third thing, where let's say you have a recommendation system. So your machine learning data science team has uh, built a, a very nice recommendation system, which gives you for a particular item, these are the recommended items or for a particular user, these are the recommended items. So what they give as an output is item IDs. Now what you need to do is, but you cannot just send item ID store user, right? You need to send the item details with photo, title and whatnot. So what you do is when you get item IDs from your notification, uh, from your, sorry, from your recommendation service, you would want to enrich it with very rich details, right? So with the item details. So from IDs, you get the details and then you send this detail to the user. This communication between your recommendation service and inventory, this, this thing should be synchronous. Right. So here are two ways to implement it. Your recommendation service, instead of just sending the IDs, your recommendation service itself can talk to inventory service to get the item details and then send it to the user. So that your, 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 your client does not need to do heavy lifting. Your recommendation service itself is doing that. Right. So you invoke the API of the recommendation service. Recommendation service has the ID, which are recommend, uh, has the item IDs, which are recommended to the user. It talks to inventory service to get the item details and it sends this entire details to the user. This way you can render a nice recommendation list to it. Right. So again, non-binary orchestration is also good. Choreography is also good. You'll see a lot of people being inclined towards choreography, but it does not make orchestration bad or it does not make orchestration obsolete. There are places where choreography suits well. There are places where orchestration suits well. Right. So you need to be always aware, ki, hey, which one I am picking, why, what are uh, the overall SLAs that I want to meet or what is the kind of requirement which is non-negotiable requirement from my system. Right. So we always be wary of that fact. Nice. So yeah, basically that's it for this one. I hope you found this interesting. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.